All right, let's talk about uh, slope intercept. Um, the rule for slope intercept, as we've been uh, kind of getting after here, is right here. The main rule for this is y equals mx plus b. Now, it's very important you understand what these letters stand for. The y, when we talk about this, is about your y coordinates on a chart. So you have your x coordinates and your y coordinates. If you remember correctly, I'll arrow this down. Your x coordinates go left to right, going this way. Your y coordinates go north and south, or up and down, going this way. So, moving back to here, the y coordinate would be this coordinate here. Remember, that's the measurement that goes up and down. The x coordinate here is the measurement that goes from left to right. So, <clears throat> when we're talking about m, we need to understand what m is. m is very important to this. It tells us a lot about this equation. m is the slope, the slope of the line. So, for example, if we look at this little line right here, m describes what's happening to this line, and I'm going to get into that in just a moment. Then there's the other part, plus b. Well, b is the y-intercept. What does that mean? Well, the y-intercept, remember this center line here, is your y-axis. So the y-intercept is where does the line cross this line. As you can see in this case, it's right here. So, we need to figure out from this rule the y equals mx plus b. Now, let's take a look at the chart. And how can we get the rule from a chart? On this one right here, you might notice that my, the, well, let's start over here, first of all, to understand what the m, the slope is. The slope is the same thing as the rise over the run. You're going to hear that a lot this year. It's your rise over the run. I hope you're taking really good notes because these are the notes. This is one of the most crucial things we're covering all year here. The rise in this case measures what's happening to your y coordinates. Remember that measures how things go up and down. Well, if you look here, and you might notice I have it labeled here, it's going up three every single time. Now, as this is going up three every single time, we also have to put that over the run. The run is what's happening to your x-coordinate point. So, if I click up here, you'll notice that the x-coordinate points are going up one every single time. So the rise would be this plus 3 that happens every single time over the plus 1, which happens every single time. So the rise is 3, the run is 1, 3 divided by 1 equals 3. So m right here equals 3. You'll notice where this m is right here, we've taken down here and we've replaced the m with the number 3, which is what we got from our slope over here. You may want to watch this several times to make sure you truly understand this. Also, you may want to have this one saved in case you have to come back to it. Now, comes the B. The B is the y-intercept. And actually, from a chart, the B is very simple. You will notice, I'm going to drag this little thing over here. Right there is my y-intercept. How did I know that so quickly? Well, your y-intercept, I'm going to go down to the graph here a little bit. Oh, come on. There we go. The y-intercept is where the line crosses this y-axis point. Well, think about it. If this is the y-axis right here, what does x equal right here in the center? Here's your positive numbers. Here's your negative numbers. And in the middle would be 0. So x equals 0. Whenever x equals 0, whatever y equals would be your y-intercept point. So going back up here, you'll notice x equals 0 right here. And when x equals 0, y equals 2. So 2 becomes my y-intercept in this case. So there's the slope, the 3 over the 1, or the rise over the run. Here's my y-intercept. When x equals 0, that equals 2. And there is my rule. Now, that's how to take a chart and get to a rule. How can you use a rule and make a chart out of it? Well, let's start, let's just say... This whole table wasn't put together. And let's just say we were going to build a chart from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And we're going to start filling in the other points. Well, what you do is you just take and you fill in these x points here. And then you solve for the y points. So, for example, let's plug in negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 for x, negative 2 
times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And you'll see that negative 4 right here. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And you'll see that point right here. 0, plug in 0 for here. 0 times 3 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. That goes right here. And so on and so forth. You keep plugging in the numbers, you can solve for all of these y points. You want to check it out? Well, try 100, for example. 100 times 3, 300. 300 plus 2 is 302, as listed right there. Hopefully that makes sense how to take and use the rule to fill in the chart. So now we've done two things. We've used the chart to create the rule, and then we worked it backwards. We took the rule to create the chart. So how can we take the rule and create this little graph here? Well, we take the rule, and let's say we had x equaling 0 right here. When x equals 0, we plug in 0. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. So we plot that point. If x equals 1, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So 1, 5. What you might notice about this here, I'm going to just lower this a little bit here. You might notice the rise is 3, the run is 1. That's what the slope of 3 means. It's like 3 over 1. Okay, You might notice these little growth triangles. That's what these are listed. The rise of 3, the run of 1. It goes up 3 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. This is what that rule, this is what the slope stands for right here. The rise over the run. The 2 right here stands for, well, where did it cross the y-intercept? At positive 2. Positive 1, positive 2, right there. So that's kind of how you take your rule and create your graph. You plug in all these different points to your rule and find out what your output or your y-value is when you plug in the different numbers. If you plug in your negative values for that same rule, you'll notice it continues going backwards the same way. You know, if you work it one way, it goes up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Work it backwards, it goes backwards 1, down 3. Backwards 1, down 3. It's like negative 1, negative 3, which, by the way, two negatives make a positive. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. The last thing we want to do is how can I take a graph and create the rule? Well, when you take a graph, the first thing to look at is look at where does it cross the y-intercept. Well, this one crosses the y-line at positive 2. So that point's very easy. That becomes this number right here, the positive 2. Then, the next part is, well, what's the slope of the line? So you find two spots where it crosses the line very nicely. In this case, it crosses here. Up 3 over 1, it crosses here. Up 3 over 1, nicely here. Up 3 over 1. So you know your slope is up 3 over 1. Your rise is 3, your run is 1, which 3 divided by 1 is 3. So your slope of the line here is a positive 3. And that's how you take a line on a graph and find the rule from that. The one I'm really not covering, but I would hope that you understand this is, what if you're given this chart and you have to graph it? Well, that should be simple. You take those points there and you plot your, plot your coordinate points, your x and your y points, the 0, 2, the 1, 5, the 2, 8. You'll notice those are right up here. 0, 2, 1, 5, 2, 8. On the negative side, you have negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 3, negative 7. You'll notice down here, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 3, negative 7. So you're just plotting your points. If you want to work it backwards and you've been given the graph, you find all these spots where it crosses and you simply plot those onto a chart. Hopefully that makes sense how you can take charts, move to rules, rules and go to graphs, graphs to go to charts, and backwards. Charts to go to graphs, graphs to go to rules, rules to go to charts. This is one you may want to watch um, over. You may want to make sure you, you have a very good uh, understanding of this. And it's also one you may want to go back, and it's a really good one to review, especially before your tests. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.